good day and welcome to LTE University. I'm Paul Shepard, I'm a senior consultant here with Award Solutions and we're going to do a series of videos where we'll talk about uh, Volti and of course Volti is an IMS service and we're going to start today by talking about the main components in the LTE network and in the IMS network and how they link together and as the underpinnings to talking about how Volti call, calls get set up. In future versions, we'll go into a little bit more detail on these, on these nodes and we'll look at ultimately how uh, calls get set up for Volti. So let's start by looking at the main components. So in terms of our architecture for Volti, if we have a UE out here, of course connected into the LTE network. Within the LTE network, we're going to have MME, we're going to have our serving gateway and we're going to have our packet data network gateway. And in the process of that UE attaching to the network, we will set up bearers to various services. If this user out here is going to do Vaulty calls and do other IMS services, then we must set up a bearer to the IMS network. And that bearer, of course, will go through the serving gateway and through the packet data network gateway and out to the IMS network. And that bearer is going to be used to send, amongst other things, our SIP messages. SIP is an application level protocol from the UE for doing things like setting up Vaulty calls and other operations with IMS. In the IMS network, we are going to have a number of components and one of the key components in the IMS network is something called the CSCF and the CSCF is the call session control function and there are actually three different flavors of CSCF. There's a something known as the P or proxy. There's the S or serving CSCF and there's also the I which is the interrogating. We'll explain in a future video the roles of these different flavors of the CSCF and why they're separated this way and when we go to look at a call set that's set up, you'll be able to see the different roles they play and the functions they play in terms of IMS services. Also in our IMS network, we are going to have various application servers known as AS. These application servers will implement all of the user services for the various sessions. And of course for Vaulty, we're going to have a particular flavor of an application server called a TES or telephony application server. And that task in Vaulty will implement all of these supplementary services that are traditionally known for voice calling in wireless networks. Now we will have other functions in our IMS network as well. Um, databases that will get involved in doing various lookups and we'll also have various gateway functions for when the Vaulty subscriber needs to communicate with non-Vaulty subscribers, for example PSTN users or other 2G, 3G wireless users. Now there's one other important node and let me just complete the, uh, the path here for the user traffic. To the IMS network and that other important node is the HSS and the HSS is common typically to both the LTE network and to the IMS network. It's going to hold subscriber profile information for both networks. You can kind of think of the HSS as being a little bit like a Janus and that it's got two faces. It's got a LTE facing role and it's also got an IMS facing role. And that linkage is going to be very important going forward. 
Now, let's explore a little bit about these various flavors of CSCF and why they're split and why we have different ones. First of all, the proxy CSCF has a particular role to play in that is the first point of contact for all UE SIP messages. So when a UE wishes to send a SIP message, it's going to send that SIP message across the LTE network, this user traffic, and that SIP message is going to arrive at the proxy or PCSCF. And it's the PCSCF's role to then route that message through the rest of the network, the IMS network, typically to an SCSCF on behalf of the user. And hence the term proxy. One example of that, when we're going to start a faulty call, we're going to send a SIP invite. That invite will initially arrive at the proxy CSCF where it will be processed and forwarded on to the serving CSCF. That's the role of the proxy. One important point to note about the proxy CSCF is that it can be in either the home or the visited network. And that's one of the reasons why the proxy is split out from the serving CSCF. The, the, uh, the need to have it in the visited network is sometimes very important. Where it sits will be determined by the roaming agreements between the various operators. And as we have not yet seen many sort of uh, IMS roaming services deployed yet, I suspect you'll see the proxy CSCF more likely than not be deployed in the visited network and have the ability, of course, to communicate back to the subscriber's home network for the serving CSCF. The serving CSCF, or S CSCF, as its name implies, is going to perform most of the session control functions. It really is very much involved in, in all of the session that a user has and is going to be controlling those sessions. It's going to determine routing for SIP messages. It's going to bring in the services of other network nodes as appropriate. It is very much involved. It has full state information about the user and what's going on. The serving CSCF is always going to be in the home network. The I CSCF, and I is for interrogating. is typically only involved in two situations. One, during initial registration, initial IMS registration, and two, the ICSCF will get involved on the terminating call leg. So when a call comes into, for a Vaulty subscriber, into the network, it's the ICSCF that will be used and will go out and do various queries to determine how that, so those SIP invite messages should get routed. So on the terminating call leg. Let's talk about one other node, 
and that is the AS or application server In general, in IMS, there can be many, many different flavors of application server doing all sorts of things. You may have an application server dedicated, for example, for conferencing. You may have an application dedicated for some sort of multimedia collaboration type service. For Vaulty, specifically, we have the TAS or telephony application server, and that's going to implement the supplementary services Those are defined in the Vaulty specification, which is GSMA IR92. Now, the TAS is going to be brought into play uh, during call setup in two instances. Number one, from the originator. Serving CSCF will take the initial SIP invite and send that invite off to the TAS. Why do we need to do that? Because we may have to perform originating services for that user. An example, I have specific privacy settings I may need to invoke or some other originating type service. Then the AS will do those services and send the invite back. Secondly, on the terminating side, when the serving CSCF on the terminating side receives that invite, it is also going to send it to the application server, which could be a different physical box, it doesn't have to be the same one, maybe in a different location, because we're going to do terminating services. For example, I have call forward enabled, I have call forward no answer enabled, what to do in that type of situation. So that's how the application server will come into play as well. Now there are other components in the IMS network that will get involved as well, and we'll touch on those in some of the later videos. So stay tuned uh, for the next one, and we'll talk about some other aspects of Vaulty and IMS. Thank you.